So I met a consumer good brand uh, about two months ago at this golf event. The owner and I spoke briefly, but I followed up via email. We tried to meet like a month ago, but he had to go see family and uh, cancel. Come, came back, it's been like a month since, the, since that happened, and I basically followed up, because I didn't know if it was gonna be like a really terrible thing he had to go up there for, so I wanted to give plenty of time. Then I followed up, he's ready to meet again. Um, so I'm gonna book a meeting with him right now, or at least that's the email exchanges we're trying to set a time. to go in next week to do an office tour, talk to them about their marketing, and it's really exciting because they just hired a brand new director of marketing, and they start on Tuesday. So if I can go and meet them on Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, that person will have just jumped in, and if they are looking to make a change, we might be able to get our hat in the ring if this person has other contacts as well and compete for the business. So maybe the new marketing director might have like this relationship with somebody that they really trust and they wanna go with them, I don't know. But I'm just hoping that we can get in front of this brand new person at this brand new company, which it sounds like we're going to, and and I'm excited. Okay, today's the day. I have the meeting with this really great consumer good brand here locally. I have a office tour followed by lunch, which is proving to be my strategy. It's working really good. People are excited to show me their office and I'm excited to see it. So it gives us a lot to talk about before lunch too. Uh, that's happening here at 11.30 and I'll let you know how it goes. We met for lunch and I knew a guy who works there so I brought him with me on the lunch which was really great because I got to lean on that relationship for conversations which just makes everything flow a lot better. Like he added to stories that the founder had and the founder added to stories that he had so that was fantastic. Uh, that's the second time I've done that recently and I really enjoyed doing it. Just kind of like a casual invite. Uh, when, I'm, when I'm on site at a lunch. So that, that works out really well. I think it's something I'm gonna continue to do. It makes the, everything a lot easier uh, during the whole process. We start talking about their current setup, their current ads. Uh, we did this, the office tour was fantastic too. They're coming out with all these different products. At the lunch, we start talking about their ads and performance and you know marketing strategies in Q4, holiday planning, how sales look, what new product lines they think are gonna do really well, what they're phasing out, what they're really ramping up. Um, talked about opportunities in their female cohort, which was really exciting. Sorry, a little location change here. Uh, we started talking about YouTube and creating really great hero videos because everyone's really excited about YouTube and the prospect of spending a lot of money there. It's the new frontier, but it costs a lot to get into it, uh, which is daunting for a lot of companies, but these guys aren't adverse to it, so that was really cool. You know, obviously I'm interested in getting a shot at like auditing their account and all that, but the most important thing is qualifying their relationship now to see if they're interested in even making a change. So I start asking a little bit about, you know, their relationship and their, their agency right now is in Delaware and I find out they have reps they talk to in Austin and also in Orange County and we're in San Diego all of us so uh, it's not going to be a one-to-one -one relationship. He made a passing joke that you know they, they weren't buying them nice lunches and maybe we should take over in Q4 and uh, it was really mostly a joke. No one would really change this deep into Q4 uh, with, when they're spending millions of dollars every month. It really was just a great well-rounded first conversation. Getting to know each other, finding out stories of past failures and successes and sharing history with each other and uh, it's just part of the relationship process that's so important. Obviously I pick up the check but as we're leaving I start asking questions about specifics you know how's your relationship with your current agency you say oh you know it's great we were with this company this other company for a really long time because they worked with a competitor and that was like the thing to do was hire them but now we're with these guys, we've been with them a year or whatever, pretty happy. I go, what do you like that they're doing? And they go, oh, you know, great communication and all that. It's, it's really great on Slack and we have weekly calls and all this and that. So that's great. They didn't say ROAS, right? Um, and they kept saying that, you know, we'll see how Q4 goes. We'll see how Q4 goes. Uh, if not, you know, we're going to need to make a change or whatever. And then basically at the end of the conversation it was like, look, let's, let's talk in January, see how Q4 went and really have a sit down about what we're going to do. So that's really exciting. I mean, I'm sure we could get access before and see how things are going. And we may even get a call in three weeks if numbers don't start pumping and ask to take over. Uh, I think that it's really possible to have the account one here in the next six months because they just hired a new marketing director. And this person is just like thrown into the lion's den here in Q4 and probably not focused on new agency at this time. They're probably focused on keeping them their head above water, <laughs> surviving this Q4 they've just been thrown into, uh, which was probably an exciting challenge. But the last thing on their mind is probably changing the agency too. So uh, that once Q4 is done, there's a everyone can take a breath. Uh, January comes with some new product launches. They're prob that's probably the time where we can have a realistic chance. So here over the next, it's mid-October now, so here over the next two and a half months, uh, the goal will be to meet probably three times, connect, 
and I see where it takes us. Uh, just try and make sure that when January comes, we're top of mind and there's no question as to whether or not they want to explore working with us. Naturally, I sent a follow-up email and I just got a reply to it. It was like, hey, it was, you know, it was an awesome lunch. Uh, feels like we got some synergies and great, you know, common colleagues in the industry here locally. And uh, he, he mentioned, you know, not saying much about it, but he's got a side business that he's launching and wants to talk to me about working on it together. So uh, obviously for the marketing, that's great. I mean, he's, he's liked me so much that now he wants to explore working with me on this new venture instead of his current agency. That's a great sign, right? Mm -hmm. This will be like a real good proving ground test case for us to say, oh, man, these guys know what they're doing and I want to work with them. Uh, why would he do that unless he was interested in working with me, right? So really excited about that. And it's great because that wouldn't have got brought up if he didn't think that, you know, he could see himself working with me in any capacity. I know he's got friends that have spoke very highly. So of us and our company, because we're doing real well for him. Um, but it's important for me that he feels that himself on his own. It's good, good, real, real good first step. I know we met in the past, but this is like our first real chance to meet. So good things ahead. Since the last conversation, it's been maybe two weeks. And throughout that time, I've been introducing branding agencies. These guys mentioned that they were interested in uh, getting some video work done, all that kind of stuff. So I went ahead and took their contact info and intro them to several people, which they liked. And I'm very comfortable with introducing these people. This is part of my group, my network, right? I have created creative agencies that are centers of influence with me. So I introduced them uh, over to these guys. I think it's going to go well for them. There's a couple companies I'm really happy for them to connect with because they come off really well. And um, so we'll see how it goes. But that's just it right now. Just a quick little update. So I had a meeting with the partners over lunch and it got not kind of canceled, but one of the partners had to go up to LA for a big conference. So instead of canceling, I just decided to do it again with the other partner, uh, get a little deeper with the relationship. We had a great chat, just kind of about everything, you know, travel and work and all that stuff. And then, it, but it was Q4, it's Q4 now, and Black Friday was starting, the sales were starting the next day, so they were kind of teed up and ready to go. But it was fun to uh, start having that conversation. Uh, rescheduling the formal meeting for the next week, but I found out it is like a fruit supplement that these guys are like a holistic type of energy boost, nutrition boost. Uh, so that'll sell like crazy if they do good branding. So I'm excited to have more of a detailed conversation about that. We'll see how it goes, keep it posted. Meeting is set with this company, we've got a date on the books to do an afternoon, uh, four o'clock, like happy hour -y type of thing. Now we're right in the middle of Q4, so it's not exactly the best time to like have these really interruption meetings at 10 a.m. for coffee. So I find it more effective to go later in the evening, like at four, 4.30, and then just tell people, you know, you can take, we can take our time. And that goes over really well typically because people feel like, you know, they can get most of their day done and they kind of have a relaxing meeting. Just having a fun conversation at the end of the day. I, you know, I'm ready to share some thoughts on conversion path, checkout models, billing models, and talk to them about their vision for their brand identity. You know, what is gonna make their brand different than every other brand out there. When people hit your landing page, what language are you gonna put on there that makes it stand out? What certifications are you gonna get? Uh, what kind of licenses are you going to get? What are you going to put on the website that's real? And what are you going to put on it that's not real just for testing purposes? Do you have any customer contact information that we can start with so we, we're not dead in the water without L, no LTV, no retargeting? I mean, we're, we're looking right now, if they don't have any of that, it's going to be a pretty rough start. You know, they're going to they're gonna be soaking up losses early to acquire customer data. And then once they build their lists up, then they can start doing heavy LTV and retargeting. And as people get deeper and deeper in the, in the funnel, then they'll start to see that CPA drop. Um, you know, I know that I don't know how many projects these guys have truly launched successfully and uh, unsuccessfully, or if it's just been the one extremely successful brand that they have now. I don't know how long it's been since they've started uh, a new project, but things have changed a lot as far as starting a new product today on Facebook and Google. So I'm interested to kind of share some insights on digital marketing and product ownership in general and bounce ideas off of these guys. They've been in their one niche uh, for a long time and one of the benefits of being an agency again is that we see a lot of different stuff in a lot of different industries. So I'm excited to share that kind of stuff and see if we can lock these guys in and onboard this uh, fun account that has future potential maybe for a bigger project. So it's an exciting time. Uh, the meeting is tomorrow and we'll keep you guys posted. The meeting went great. Uh, it was a, 
how long did it take? I think it, we were there an hour and a half. You know, I was obviously hopeful that we would talk a lot about uh, the main company, the big company that uh, I'm looking forward to working with, but that didn't end up happening. We ended up talking a lot about their new project that they're starting and the aspirations for that and what they want it to look like and you know the website and the branding and the messaging and the quality of the products they were so excited and it just gave me this rush of adrenaline uh, from the old days when i was starting products all the time and it is the absolute most exciting part of the whole process is developing creating something from nothing is absolutely you can't compare it you just it's very hard to compare that to something it feels so amazing and it's and it's opportunities that are rich in 2020 2019 as we are today i mean it is, it's just a totally different planet that we're in. You know, the 2008 recession really changed everything when people started buying, uh, creating their own stores and projects on Etsy and Pinterest and Groupon, it exploded. There was this chance for people to create their own opportunities and in a way that they, they really weren't able to full-fledged before. So that was really uh, very cool to talk about this fun new project that they're kind of keeping on the hush. I don't think they want everyone really knowing about it. They want it to seem very focused and determined. Um, so it, you know, it's it's cool to be working with people that are excited to start something new. Um, and the most obviously the most exciting part is, as far as sales and new business goes is that if we can get in and do a good job on this new small project, obviously it seems likely we'd get an opportunity for the big one. It, it is Q4 right now, the biggest sales time of the year for 99% of companies, no 90% of companies that are B2C. And it's unlikely in a big way that anyone would really make a change right now, uh, especially if they're doing well, which they are. So. Uh, you know, I, my, my expectations were met with this meeting. It's not like I'm disappointed at all. I'm very happy to have an opportunity to work with these guys in any capacity. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get access when the time comes. It's about two weeks away from the website being fully live. I doubt they have an ad account created. I doubt they have fan pages created. Like everything's still getting set up in terms of vanity. Um, so I'm looking forward to being a part of that as a advisor or consultant to them, like talking about branding. And that's really all we talked about in the meeting was how they're going to stand out. You know, if somebody goes to uh, one company and then your company, how are they going to know the difference? Because at the end of the day, a net new prospect now is no different now than three years from now. It's all about what they see when they land on the on the landing page, what copy is, do they relates to them really well and knowing your avatar who are you targeting to it's 34 year old women that do yoga drink white wine and like to be with their family five days a week on some sort of indoor or outdoor activity or like to watch murder mysteries or you know whatever all the silly little things that you could potentially capture data on and then tailoring your message to communicate right to them so they see the brand and they say yes this resonates with me i want this type of product and this is why i'm willing to pay x dollars more for it because only one company can be the most cost effective the most the lowest price everybody else is a story and their story needs to be that of we're a premium brand or we are your brand or we're perfect for you because of this and it, it so that's what they're uh, really crafting right now and it sounds like they have a great idea of their brand right now and how it's going to to be shown and communicated but i'm interested to see here as we move towards the last part of this process which includes ad copy you know uh above the fold creative and copy and overall messaging and storytelling across social media and the website how is that message going to get told and what is the copywriting in the emails that's going to help people understand that they're you know, choosing the right brand that's what's going to make the roi you know different from 1x to 8x so it's fun to be a part of that process obviously i really love the process so i'm going to be sending over different ad creatives that i like and websites that i like so they can get a, a sense for what i think would convert as the digital marketing partner on the deal um, it's something I think I can add a lot of value to as they move forward in the deci decision-making process. So anyway, uh, that's it for this deal. If anything changes, I'll make another video, but I think this is kind of a wrap because we locked it down and we're gonna start running ads for them in two weeks. So uh, unless something changes, like they don't shut the thing down, this is another win and notch in the belt. And I'll fire this series back up if, we had, if and when we get a chance at the big account, which we're really hoping for, and they probably know we're hoping for, uh, but that's a much, much more uh, serious process to get involved with. And I have a feeling this is our 
qualification for them. So we keep having lunch meeting with these guys about this company that we're onboarding actively and they're starting, but now the conversation is starting to talk about their bigger company that could potentially be in play, which I was hoping would happen and is happening because it's inevitable. They run this big successful company and this is like their side project they're really passionate about and you just can't help but have conversations with them about the bigger company every time you talk. One of my business partners had got a little aggressive talking about uh, performance numbers and things that we could do and have done with other clients and got them really excited with strategies for retargeting that they're not doing now. And so now we're gonna go in and do an audit or at least look at their ad account now and show them things that we suggest they do, which is essentially an audit. And if they make some of those changes, we could have a chance to just take the whole thing over. Um, so I'm waiting for that meeting to get set up and we'll see when it happens. A couple of major developments in this deal. Uh, we had a introduction made from a colleague at the company, not the owners that I've connected with and built a relationship with, but the brand marketing manager. And he reached out to set up a meeting specifically with him and the VP of marketing, who's new four months in, uh, but you know got through the holidays and now has uh, her head above water, can take a breath, and say, okay, you know, what, what, what's the real landscape here? Um, so I'm excited to have that meeting with this person who's apparently doing a spectacular job and talk in a, about our company and ourselves, what we'd like to do, what we can do, and talk about their ads a little bit. And I think it's gonna be over lunch, so it's not gonna be like a heavy closing type of situation. It's really just gonna be like getting opinions, uh, establishing credibility, having her validate us uh, because we already have relationships and that's probably why we've got these meetings. But now we need to be validated by the person who's essentially going to be uh, giving us a stamp of, yeah, I could work with these guys or not because she would be the direct contact. So we had the meeting already and it went really great. I mean, two hour lunch, I mean, it was just spectacular and she is really nice and uh, the other guy that was there was really enjoyable to talk to as well. I brought my business partner. It was just a spectacular lunch. Talking about everything, you know? Everything from franchising to uh, business uh, that are businesses that are selling to uh, marketing strategies in a very specific way, you know, all, all the way back to their business and goals, uh, family, kids, you know, everything. It was really, it was really a great meeting. And it ended with us uh, I asking to have an opportunity to work with them um, specifically to get access to their ad accounts and do an audit. But um, I don't think she had expected that maybe. Uh, maybe she didn't have the level of permission already uh, to give us access per se, uh, because this company is well funded with uh, third parties and there's m many levels of permissions that have to go into it. They're a very big company. Uh, so it's not surprising that she wants to huddle up with the CEO uh, get on the same page. The CEO uh, has a really good relationship with the current agency uh, that they're working with now. So it was a very big deal for me in the meeting to make sure that they're not married to that agency. Uh, and they're not. They had uh, worked with them in the past, fired them, hired them again, and they're back with them and not very happy for many reasons, be it communication uh, and general interest in their shown interest in working on the account with you know loading new creatives and everything. So they're ready to make a change, and the CEO is on board. She just has to show. She just has to share with him uh, that you know she is also on board with Attention Agency, our company and wants to explore working with us further. And that meeting is happening tomorrow. Uh, so we should find out either tomorrow, well, probably the next day, because I think it's an afternoon meeting, whether we're going to, okay, let's let's explore working with these guys. So I've got, we've got the VP of marketing, we've got the couple of founders in, and now we need to get the CEO who we haven't met uh, to get us kind of an opportunity. I'm sure that that person will be in the formal meeting where we present our marketing strategy if we get the access and try and close the business. But for now, uh, we haven't, they're a, a, a degree removed th from the process. So that's totally fine. Uh, it's been a great process so far and I continue to connect with uh, the founders through this other project and talking about it. It got delayed. Uh, they had a label issue. The labels weren't sticking correctly on the on the packaging, so they had to redo that. So they've had a little bit of delay on launch for that, but it's great because we get to chat about that. And I've specifically not brought up uh, the main company because they removed themselves from the process so that the people that are totally in charge of marketing 
could handle it all. And I thought that was really professional. You know, hey, we met a company, they're interesting, you guys, inter you guys meet, and you guys uh, talk and decide. I thought that was really a uh, very, very professional and very experienced move. I was very impressed by that. So uh, I'll keep you posted if it, uh, as the next things happen here in the next day or two, we're gonna have some, uh, some good news. So uh, we'll get the next update going then. Okay, so Friday comes. She's supposed to get back to me Friday morning. I hear nothing. And I get a message from the owner of the company and one of the co-founders, and he tells me, hey, I'll call you a little later today. I'm like, oh no, why, why are you calling me? Shouldn't this lady be calling me who we met with and said she was gonna follow up? She had the meeting on Thursday, like it was a whole thing. Now, the founder who's like my buddy now, true, truly like my boy, he's gonna call me? Oh, so I'm like, is, why, I don't like that. You know, I don't like that. But that wasn't the plan. The plan was for her to call me after her meeting. So I'm, I'm like talking through it with my partners on it. And I'm like, dude, you know, he's got to be calling about good news because he would just have her deliver bad news, right? I mean, there's no way he would volunteer to do bad news. So, you know, we're talking about, he's like, well, maybe he, since you're friends, he wants to give you bad news and not her. I'm like, ah, oh, that's a good point too. So he ends up calling me in the afternoon and he's, you know, they had made some changes in the company, so we talked about that a little bit. And then he's like, hey, you know, I, I, I really want you to do an audit on the account. It sounds like a great idea. I think you guys could be a great fit. We li really enjoy you. You're like my true friend now at this point. And, you know, I, I'm comfortable with you guys. I'm confident in you guys. And I want you to really get a good shot at uh, trying to sign the business. And if we end up going with you, I think I'd really enjoy, enjoy working with you. Uh, which was great. We got all the access uh, like 20 minutes after we were off the phone. It was crazy. I mean, that's the kind of response I'm really looking for. Like people that know how to give access, want us to get in there, want us to dig in. That's exactly what I'm looking for. But I didn't like if he, when he said, if we end up going with you guys to get the business, now I know we're competing on the deal and they're looking at somebody else, which is smart. I mean, they should be doing that. Uh, we find out today, which is four days later, that one of the biggest companies in San Diego for digital marketing has the access. They were given access to the account and they'll be auditing it as well. No other companies have been added. So that's really great news for us because they are, it's, it's big versus small and small is not bad. You're going to get way more personal touch with small and there's just absolutely no way that they can compete with us for the level of service that we're going to give uh, for the money that they're gonna pay. The one concern here is that when they go visit this big agency and they see the 50 people working there and they see the ping pong table and the big high rise office building, will they go into that building and think to themselves, yes, this is the place that I need to take my business. This is where success truly will sit for me and my, and my company versus the small intimate boutique shop that's gonna give a very personal touch. You know, I'm hoping that we can persuade them in that we are the right choice. We're gonna do our best though. I've done everything I can at this point to build the hell out of this relationship. And I feel like if we go in and present this audit, which is like 30 pages at this point, by the way, sh showcase expertise and let them know that we're going to basically live in their account, that we'll win the business and that's all we can do. Uh, we have to leverage our, our small size and desire to make them win uh, in a way that's unparalleled. The meeting is in three days and we'll see how it goes. We had a meeting to present the audit to this company. We went ham on this audit, totally blew it out with like 40 pages. This thing was almost 40 freaking pages of audit and like no fluffy pictures. You know, a lot of time you'll see an audit come through. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but they are crazy with light information and heavy imagery from Google search. We don't have any of that. Dense text, all custom. I want to win this account. Some of the guys we're working with, my partners, want to win this account. So we did everything we could to blow these guys out with value. Tons and tons and tons of value and information. And here's our knowledge. Here's our knowledge. And it went over really well. You know, we said at the beginning of the call, I hope you guys are blown away. We want this to be the best audit you've ever seen. And that's what we're working hard to do. We want to be the best, our whole company, our agency, we want it to be the best 
This is a representation of that. Then we dug into the audit and the guys started jamming. We only had an hour and a half to get through 40 pages. The first part was an audit, a proper audit, ripping their account apart, talking about all the things they could be doing and they're not doing. And then the second part was marketing strategy, uh, which was much more about like, here's what we would do in the whole top to bottom funnel. And then after the bottom of the funnel, how we retarget and bring people back for LTV, all that kind of thing, which we got to very small at the end. There were really great questions asked by the leader in their office really of marketing. He was the partner, the, the venture capital partners representing body and has extensive marketing experience. And he asked some very good questions, very difficult questions for inexperienced buyers, truly testing us, but also really showcasing his level of knowledge, which was very exciting. And that is when my partners uh, got a chance to shine, each of them in their expertise answered those questions brilliantly. And I was very proud that they did such a good job answering these very difficult questions. And that's a very important part. You know, if you don't have the confidence to go in and make big claims and big promises about performance because you know you can deliver, you're never going to sign the account. So make sure you're, set, you're setting yourself up with uh, being prepared or knowledgeable in the area you need to be. If you need to bring that extra person, it's been my experience, just bring the extra person and you're not going to regret having them there to answer the difficult questions. Because if a client is asking a question, that is what they really care about. And having someone there that can answer it is very, very important. Otherwise, you kind of aren't able to instill that constant, relentless confidence that you need to throughout the process. At, at, at an hour and a half, we had, you know, everyone on the call were like, hey, we're out of time. You know, we haven't even got through the marketing strategy yet. Like, do you guys have any more time? And all of them uh, said, yes, give us, you know, let's do 10 more minutes, guys, get through it, uh, which was great. You know, if, if they had decided to stick with the relationship that they had, which we knew that uh, one of the people on the call had a strong relationship with their current partner, why would you spend extra time? If you're not getting value on a call, why would you spend extra time? So they gave us 10 more minutes, we walked through the marketing strategy, and then all of them complimented our audit, telling us how spectacular it was, best audit they've ever seen, and that is just exactly what we want them to say, and we want them to be blown away, because you know, if we're working this hard for free, imagine when you start paying us how hard we're gonna work. Uh, so that was really exciting, I'm very, feeling very good about that. The next call was scheduled for today, which was a week later. Uh, I'd followed up, we had the original meeting with them on a Thursday, I'd followed up on the next Tuesday to say, hey, we're coming up on a week, I just wanted to make sure we schedule that follow-up phone call we discussed. How does Thursday or Friday sound? So they chose Friday, here it is Friday, and we have our call, and you'll see how that call went. But always planting seeds to make sure that I am setting everyone up to have our next call. So before we got off that call, presenting the audit, I made sure we knew their time frames. Oh, what's your decision time frame here? And making them commit, and they say next week, you know, we'll be ready to have a call next week, or the end of next week, let's have a call. So then I get to follow up about that and keep them keep them uh, honoring their, their statements and their commitments to that at some point next week time frame. Uh, I found to be really good to keep tension and keep momentum. So I made sure I did that. They followed up Tuesday, set the meeting for today, and you'll be able to see how it went uh, here on the call right now. Just had a call with this company, uh, did the formal presentation, and this was the follow-up call that we had, and we talked about terms, pricing, uh, billing, uh, email, you know, ad management, everything. Everything was disclosed, nothing is ambiguous now. I asked specifically about time frames. When are you ready to make a change? You know, what are you thinking for a change? I don't care. I just ask those questions really strong because I want to get the answers and I want them to commit to the answers out loud. They're going to make a change by 4-1 or 4-10. Okay. Well, if you make a change sooner, I'll help you with discounting our fee in that time frame so you're not double paying agencies. Ease the blow a little bit. Uh, so hopefully that goes over well. We talked about pricing on email. Uh, services as well, but that was just like a trial period. So I don't think price is a really big problem for them. Just trying to help them make the decision to move things to us uh, so that long term we can work together. Um, that was a really great call. I think they're ready to make a change. It seems like they're really comfortable with us as a person or a partner that could be uh, taking over their business and making it good. So I'm happy with that. Um, you know, generally, if we're looking to sign clients. I need them to keep tight time frames. You know, I have to keep the tension. I have to keep the decision-making process uh, top of mind uh, because if we get into the stagnant point where it's like, well, all right, great, thanks for the presentation. Talk to you soon. There's no momentum there. There's no tension at all. Uh, I have to keep the line tight. 
uh, so that they're feeling like they're making progress forward. They're making changes that they, they said they were going to make. And uh, that's my hope in bringing up time frames and offering incentives to move quicker. Um, and that's what I've done. So now I have a reason to follow up on uh, 410 uh, or next week. I said on the phone call he was going to follow up. I would get back to us Monday because it's Friday today. So now if I don't hear from them afternoon my Monday, I'm going to you know reach back out to them and make sure that uh, you know they're ready to set up another call uh, to discuss, uh, like send them our contract so they can review it or see if there's anything we can do to assist them in this time or you know whatever it is at least I have a reason because they said they get back to us Monday and it let us know but I, you know they were very impressed with the generally the audit they're happy with us we communicate I'm already working with the owners on another call and we after the call there we just got on the call to talk to about the other company so the deal is not done they still have to decide to hire us and we have to convince them to sign on the line that is dotted uh, and now we're, it's Friday, we're going to talk Monday or hear from them on Monday with some sort of either decision or a statement about where they stand and their time frames. Uh, they, it's really exciting that they gave us a date that they want to change, either the 1st or the 10th, um, and we'll work to try and be the company that they, they sign by staying in front of them and continue to provide value and communicate uh, throughout that time. So no decision yet, but another really great second meeting with this company to talk about the tough stuff, terms and pricing and how we operate, how we handle creatives, how we communicate, how we organize ourselves, all that kind of stuff. Some of the changes that we suggested in our audit got implemented, uh, which is pretty cool because it means they liked what we had to say and thought it valuable enough to share the audit with the current agency. But what's most exciting is that the changes we suggested are working really, really well. It almost cut their CPA in half. So you could look at this as, oh, we shouldn't have shared so much, bad idea, now they might not hire us. But the reality of the situation is they don't like their current agency. The things we recommended are working and we get to lean into that and say, look, they still don't have it done correctly, perfectly the way we would do it. And look what happens with the stuff we suggested. Obviously, you guys are gonna make more money working with us. We just have to try and get past that relationship because now that the numbers are better, it's so easy to not fire somebody, uh, especially a friend, when the numbers are better. They're probably leaning really hard into that relationship right now. At the end of the day, I'm not really worried. Um, you know, what we suggested is working, and even if they do decide to uh, have that stay with their agency for another week or two, at the end of the day, I think they are gonna move. Uh, so we'll see. Anyway, we, oh, and we adjusted our pricing down on email. Uh, we had one number, they wanted a little more service. They wanted creative and copywriting and templates included as one like all in service so they could just kind of wipe their hands of the process. So we adjusted our pricing, essentially adding those services in for pretty much the same fee uh, to try and get that as a part of what we're working on with them as well. We really pitch email as just retargeting, so it's important for us to have our hand in it as well because you know, all the communication across the entire customer journey uh, can be consistent, and Amazon as well, but specifically email is really important. So that was a change that we did make. Oh, and we also offered to discount the fee to, uh, if they decided to hire us right away, we decided to discount the fee during the time of overlap. Uh, so it would make it easier for them to make the change now, as opposed to waiting the 20 days or whatever it is left. Um, so, you know, hey, come now. I know you don't want to double pay agencies. We'll drop our fee so you don't really have to get hit too hard, but we can start making some of these changes right away. I mean, at the end of the day, it's the 24th of March and I'm trying to bring this deal in in Q1. So I got to get, you know, this week it's got to happen. Uh, otherwise, we I miss my goal really for Q1. Anyway, that's a little update. We should hear back today. I have a call with them regarding the other project we work with them on. So I'm sure it's going to come up and we'll get a little update. But either way, I'm feeling great. So I sent an email out uh, five days after our last phone call saying, hey, it's almost coming up on a week. You know, let's schedule another call uh, suggesting Friday or Monday. And I didn't hear back. And it's now Tuesday and I finally got a courtesy reply back. Um, so that wasn't that exciting to hear, but um, I decided to call one of the owners. I basically asked him like, you know, what's going on with, uh, with the account? Where are we thinking about making a change or where are you at? What are you thinking? And he said, you know, it's basically like one of the people wants to hire you guys right now. And if it was up to them alone, we would already be working with you, which is great. I've got a champion, right? Like that's always good to have. Um, but they were concerned about some of the mistakes that they made in the past coming back to bite them again if they worked with us, which tells me we didn't do a good enough job convincing them that we were the expert candidates uh, for the position. 
So uh, we, I got some specifics and it has to do with uh, sales and discounting strategies during big holiday events like you know Black Friday or Father's Day or whatever. So um, I had some ideas and suggested, you know, we, we can provide case studies from previous accounts and clients and performance based on uh, Black Friday for them. And uh, maybe I'll send that over. But at the end of it, it basically just came down to me explaining that, you know, this business is Black Friday, six months, seven months away, even eight, I think it's eight months away. And we have five or six really big holidays before then. So we can do a analysis of our performance over the first three of those holidays and then say, hey, look, th how did we communicate? How did we perform? Did you enjoy it? And do you want to continue working with us? And if not, it's our fault. We didn't do a good enough job. And if they do want to continue working with us, great. We did a great job and they want to keep working with us. So it's a way for us to prove ourselves and then they can just go back. I mean, they went back last time and everything worked out. And if it doesn't work out, they're not gonna be pissed. It's just that we didn't perform, which I know we will, so I'm not worried about it. One of the problems though, or disappointing things was that email is off the table and Google is off the table. They're pretty happy with their Google account, I guess. So I uh, don't think they're gonna be making a change there. The one thing we are debating is dipping the fee to take all of those services. So I have a feeling it has to do with, with price on that stuff. They might be happy, but money wins all. And if we came in and dropped our fee 1% or something and said, you know, we will do we will do it for X percent for all of the business, or we'll take this one line at the higher rate, whatever you guys want, we might end up getting all the business. So that's kind of being saved for our last sword in our, our last arrow in our quiver, I guess. Um, and I hope we don't have to do it, but I do want all the business. I got a reply back today, like I said, and basically saying like our change day is, you know, whatever, 10 days away and we're going to make a decision here in the next week or so. Uh, we'll make sure you guys are, are ready, uh, are aware. So that's cool. I'm just going to send a courtesy reply and say, great, you know, looking forward to hearing back from you. So we'll keep you guys posted, see what happens. Had kind of a cool late uh, development on this deal. I sent a email uh, to the basic VP of marketing, the person who's not the final, final decision maker, but the person we would definitely be working with on a day-to-day, -day, a week-to-week -week basis. And one of the main concerns was handling holidays. They had a really bad experience, as you remember in previous videos, with Black Friday. And they had to make a change last minute. It was a nightmare, I think, on Thanksgiving, something like that was crazy. That was a concern. And through the process of presenting the information, we only touched on it very briefly because the audit was so dense. So I sent an email just as like a friendly reminder that, you know, there are six holidays between now and Black Friday. And I recommend that we pre-schedule a holiday review after Father's Day, Memorial Day, and July 4th. So we'll meet on like July 10th, sit down, recap the strategy, recap, recap the implementation, the successes and failures, and the communication. You know, how did the whole process go? Did you like it? And then you can decide, are you feeling like we can handle holidays, which they will, and are you comfortable with us going into Black Friday? Because that's the time to really start. You know, early July, mid July, you gotta get going. You gotta get planning, you gotta be ready. So um, that went over well, and she replied thanking me for the, the thought, and also asked a question about one of the campaigns that their current agency was running and trying to convince them was a good idea, and it was performing subpar. They didn't see the future, they didn't really understand it. So I, I passed the question along to our lead Facebook buyer and because he's gonna answer it a lot better than me, even though I could have answered it. And he came back with this incredibly overly thorough re response in crazy detail with screenshots and everything. It was awesome. And really blew her away and said, you know, thank you very much, appreciate it. We'll be back to you this afternoon. So we could be hearing something later today as far as the decision goes, because they're making a change for sure in seven days, and we kind of got to have a thumbs up before then so we can start watching the account, looking at stuff, even maybe making changes, get a contract signed. You know, they don't want to go a day without an agency. So um, anyway, that's a little update. We'll see if we hear back today. Fingers crossed. We have another account from these guys, and my business partners was speaking to them on that account. And remember, that was a smaller account, and there's the bigger account that we're working on, and the trends, the conversation transitioned into talking about the bigger account because they're three days away from change potentially. And earlier in the week, they had asked us a question, a clerical question about, hey, this is the strategy we want to deploy. Would you do it? And the answer was no. And a very, very overly thorough reply was given. And we didn't really get much of a uh, response to it aside from thank you. 
And so the conversation transitioned, I guess, with my partner who we were just talking about on the phone. They, they started talking about that email and our contact hadn't really read it, didn't really know he heard about it, but he didn't really go through it because it was really thorough and you'd have to have a coffee before you read it. So they broke it down and it sounded like they were talking for a long time specifically about the strategy. And then they started going through all the other changes that were made and how they were not correct and they weren't right. He, the owner of the company, had come to the basic understanding of is that they're, they're not being, uh, they're not performing the way they could and it's not happening for them. There's money being left on the table. Then the guys aren't really optimizing the account the way they should, which is a perfect place for them to be. You know, we had sent this follow-up email yesterday, right? Sent this follow-up email yesterday, like, hey, we're, you know, six days away or five days away or whatever it is from change. You know, it's, we got to schedule a meeting to figure out what you guys want to do. And I got no reply uh, over 24 hours. So that was a little worrisome uh, because if we're going to about to work with these people, they're probably replying to me and excited, right? So this kind of conversation on the phone discussing the ads is needed. In the future, if it was me, I would call them right away today, this morning, just exactly right. If we don't get a response in 24 hours, call our contact, call our champion and discuss technical issues with the account to make sure that we reinstill the confidence that we're the right move and we're going to take care of you more than more so than just an email that's forgotten or ignored uh leading people to feel like they get to tuck away we have to keep the tension and we have to make sure we get people on the phone if we're having trouble getting responses on the email especially at this critical last moment so this is the perfect thing to have happen and i think it's really going to help uh, us win the deal at the end of the day right now is so important we got to stay top of mind. We have to continue to instill confidence right before a change. So this is good. Uh, really happy about that. There was a phone call had between all my partners and the two partial decision makers for this company. That was this morning, uh, 930. We had a warm up meeting or a prep meeting at 830 where everyone was on the call going over what we thought we should do. What they were looking for were a list of quick wins, action items, one specific campaign breakdown that the current agency thinks is a good idea and we don't think is a good idea, and also our plan for the next 60 days and what we would do. This all spawned from an email that came in from them to us saying that they are preparing a PowerPoint presentation to present and talk to their other partner who is the other party to the decision-making process and I think probably wields a little bit more influence because there's investors involved and he's on the board and blah, blah, blah. So this person needs to be convinced. And again, this person has a relationship involved, but it's not just that. This company, it's not just the relationship. This company has changed agencies so the current agent, multiple times in the last 18 months, the, the current agency was changed back to four months ago. About a year before that, they were changed away from and then changed to six months before that. So this company has made three or four changes in the last 18 months. So now these people have to go to their board and explain why they are changing once again to a different agency and why it's going to be better. It's proving to be an issue because no one wants to put themselves in that position. We have many clients with boards. It's always a concern is talking to the board. So I understand the reasons for all of these concerns in making another change. But getting another email now, wanting to have yet another phone call with all parties involved. Everyone will be on this phone call tomorrow evening, the day before or day of the change, to review the account, review all the things that we deem as strategic problems and change needs to talk about why it's so necessary for them to change with all parties. Again, we have presented a 40 page audit. We've presented a 30 day action plan. We've presented uh, a now a another uh, quick action item plan. We've presented a strategy for the next 60 days uh, for specific to holidays. And we have now got another phone call scheduled to talk yet again about the account itself and the problems and changes that have been made that aren't correct and our uh, strategy for Black Friday. The slower they move, the bigger the account. And I get that. This thing's moving slow. They're being very careful because it's more than them being concerned about making another change because it's 
they can't make another change and have it have to change back to the other account again. It would just be humiliating for these people, and I understand that completely. So they're being overly thorough, making sure that this is, in fact, the right decision. And if they do make the change and we perform, even if we perform, honestly, at the same percentage, which we won't, we're going to blow these people out of the water. But even if we performed at the same rate, I don't think they're leaving, leaving anytime soon. Uh, so anyway, we have a call to tomorrow with everybody in line and it's best case scenario. You know, that's the, we want everybody on in a phone call, not an email, not having a, somebody relay the messages that we're trying to get across. We want the, the decision maker on the line talking and asking difficult questions to us about ads and having us have a chance to answer them and still confidence because things get lost in the game of telephone. But this thing is making some twists and turns here at the end, man. I, I went from not getting replies for a few days to now having multiple calls a day and multiple emails a day. So they're feeling it. They're, they're on the hook. You know, it, they could make a change. And if they don't, it's going to be our own fault because we're having every opportunity. We have multiple calls with all the decision makers now. So here we go. Had the call with the account, the last call. It went great. We basically re-broke down. We basically did an audit of the account in front of them while we did a screen share, broke down all the things that were good and bad about the account and discussed why some settings were one way. And then we discussed the history of the account, you know, why they made these decisions for this type of campaign versus another and why they thought one campaign would work better than another. And then we would go through and talk about what was wrong with those decisions over time, what, why those de decisions didn't work. It, every time there was a point brought up about why something should be changed, the main decision maker who had been on less phone calls with us agreed every time and at no point disagreeing. It would ask, uh, repeatedly ask really spectacular questions and always get a good answer about a strategy being different and better and agree and make, it, make sense of the logic. They would explain the decisions that they made and why they were doing certain things and we would agree that they that made sense. Those decisions, those strategies you deployed, those decisions make sense. Yeah, I get it. I know why you've made those decisions now, but we could do better and here's why. So that worked really well. Today is the 9th. They're making a decision on the 10th. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But we are definitely at the end of the rope and they need to either cut the rope or tie a knot. So we'll see what happens. Just had a quick phone call with the client right before their last meeting discussing whether they wanted to hire us or not. And talking about Q4, Black Friday, you know, we'd already gone over all this stuff. They wanted to see screen shares and stuff. I, We could have done that, but they know we know what we're doing. It was a longer conversation. There was a lot that was said, but one of the things I wish I said was, and I would recommend saying in the future to anybody who's in this position where they're having trouble breaking a relationship is if you hire us, are you going to hold us to the same performance and time investment standard that you're holding this current agency to? And they're guaranteed going to say no. They're going to expect more. Well, if you're expecting more from us, if you hire us, why are you allowing yourself to stay with an agency that you, with mediocre performance half-heartedly and isn't giving you what you expect and you feel you deserve in terms of services? That's what I wish I'd said. And if I had said that, I think it would have been done, deal, over. There were a lot of things that were said, you know, talking about how we own the company and there's a lot of uh, investment in time and, uh, you know, we want it for us, not just for them. The self-interest is really important um, and it is. It's talking about the fact that we are going to own the account and we want you running around town telling all of your your friends and industry colleagues that you work with us and we're doing amazing because then they're going to come to us and wonder what's happening with your brand and it, because it's self-interest it's my company and i hope that that resonates because they're business owners as well we also went over performance numbers and expectations and strategies and stuff one more time this felt like it was okay we're about to have a call with the guy that uh, and the rest of the team and we would just want to make sure that we're totally invested with you before we do this. 
And I was really quiet for the first half of the call and then I started talking, but I wish I'd made that point because that is the difference. You're trying to drive a wedge between their current agency or their service provider and you. And making that distinction clear and what the difference is gonna be uh, is very, very important. And I didn't, I, you know, I did a good job of that, but I feel like we could have done better if I'd made that, that more prominent in the conversation. So don't mess that up in the future if anybody's out there trying to break a relationship that's what it's gonna take, I think. Friday about 3.45. We have a call set up by the point of contact at 4.30. And this is gonna be a big meeting. It's, it's a week past their deadline to make a change. Uh, clearly this day last week was the day they thought they were gonna make a change and they're having a tougher time than they thought. And multiple conversations since have been had. And uh, today feels like the day that they're gonna make this call. Uh, a 4.30 call at on a Friday is either going to be vodka or champagne tonight. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm very prepared for this meeting, and I've got some talking points I want to go over. There's a lot of reasons that they should work with us and not work with somebody else, and I feel like I've done a really good job all throughout the process of making sure that we eliminate all these objection potential, potential objections. Early on, I do, I'm do. i very good at or uh, become skilled at qualifying accounts to make sure they're ready for a change. You can never guarantee that they're going to change to you or that they're going to leave their agency, but just that they have a strong desire to change, especially if there's not something terrible happening and an eminent problem that has to be solved. There's no real heavy motive to make a change right now, so I have to determine uh, or qualify really well that that is a, a motivation and did that really well. Uh, multiple parties confirmed that they were aware of wanting to make a change. There was a relationship in place and I made sure I eliminated eliminated that as a reason to not hire us. I, that doesn't mean it's not gonna be, be still a difficulty in getting the deal, but I definitely uh, nullified that as a reason to not hire us by confirming and saying, are you married to your existing agency? I know there's a contact relationship, but are they willing to fire them if it comes down to it? They said, yes, You know they're aware of the change desires. We've talked about it, it's under control. It will be a conversation, but it's not going to be something that hurdles us from potentially making a change to you guys or anybody else. So that was good. I confirmed price several times, probably four times I talked about price, not offering a discount, but saying that, you know, well, I just wanna make sure you understand our pricing's fair. Do you think it's fair? Is it in line with what you were expecting? And they confirmed that as well. I know it's not gonna be the vision, like our visions aren't aligned. They are, they're very aligned. We believe and we've talked a lot about what we think that the company can do and uh, push a lot of their sales all throughout the year with a higher ROAS than focusing on a massive amounts of spend on these holiday months. And also providing action plans, 30 day action plans of what we would do right now, which they agreed with a lot of the changes that we would make right away. So they know our visions are aligned. It can't be our capabilities because we've shared, uh, because I shared other clients' performance completely anonymously. Uh, no one's information was shared, but we did do screenshots uh, blacking out the company name to say, you know, we can handle large amounts of spend. We're doing it now for other clients. Like, you know, we've got it under control. So I know that's not it because we've proven that we can handle it with other accounts. It's not the support and internal resources because they would have all four partners at their full disposal working on the account at all times, as well as the employee that we have now. We're actively trying to hire one more employee. And then if we did bring this company on, certainly very open to hiring one or two, even multiple people to assist in management and add optimization, just even writing copy and loading ads and making gifts and whatever it is that uh, we so deem necessary to make sure that the account performs as perfect as possible is not an issue issue at all. But as it is, there's four partners and, and a, another employee that would be at, the, at their full disposal. And it's not uh, the softwares and all that. I mean, we've got really advanced scripts that we use and software. So I know it's not any of that stuff. And they know that as well, because we've said that kind of stuff. It's not the commitment to the account because we've shown our willingness to do phone calls, Zoom calls, uh, have on, you know, one, two hours before presentation, prepare elaborate, pre you know, PDF documents that look good and are exactly what they want. We've communicated really well, all uh, very consistently. And again, we're working on that other account with this company. So they've seen what it's like to work with us all the time and talk to us all the time. So that's a really big deal. If we get a no, those are the things I'm going to bring up and try to persuade them to move to us along with the thing I'd mentioned in the last video, which was talking about what their expectations are for service and if they would expect more from us as, as opposed to the other. 
Um, but if at the end of the day, if there's anything that we're, I'm missing from this list, which I can't see anything that I'm missing as to what we've addressed that could potentially be a concern of theirs, we will fix it. But we'll see what happens here on this phone call in T minus 40 minutes. All right, wish me luck. Well, you can't win them all. This was a big one. The bigger they are, the harder they come. A very long process, but this one is a big L, basically telling us that we won the business and they just couldn't move to us because they were they were concerned uh, and staying with their current agency seemed like a safer move than moving to us. And having the owner of the company tell me that he knows his agency isn't doing anything for him right now until the holidays and they're staying with them is so bizarre. It's giving me the uh, Q3 deal. Maybe we'll talk about it in Q3. And if we do, I'll light this video back up. But for now, we lost. Not only that, but did they not change? And they stayed with their current agency that they disliked so much. The, the takeaway on this deal, one of them anyway, is to get every decision maker involved earlier. Not just find out who they are, but get them involved earlier in the process because that proved pivotal for us on a potential change. Having that person involved way too late made it feel like a hair on fire situation as opposed to a smooth, slow, concentrated decision that they were in total control with and total control of and totally comfortable with. So in the future, we'll have to make sure that we have every, everybody involved that needs to be involved. Um, and that involves finding out who those people are and making sure they're involved regardless of whether somebody says they need to be involved or not um, because everyone thinks they have all the decision-making power and yet here we are in a decision in a situation where this guy wants to hire us he's the owner of the company but his investors are preventing it if we had the investors in earlier we wouldn't be in this situation so it's unfortunate perhaps this deal will come back around uh, if nothing else there'll be some referrals out of it i'm sure either way it was a great uh, opportunity and now we move on to Bigger, better, and most definitely different deals. All right, my name's Bobby Dietz. Thanks for watching this series, and we'll see you in the next one.